So uh, hypoglycemia is defined as a drop in the blood glucose level below the accepted threshold. So this is the key thing. What is the accepted threshold? And everyone is debating it still. Hypoglycemia can be transient or persistent, and it can be symptomatic or asymptomatic. Remember that we don't want to reach symptomatic stage. We want to be aware of the risks. We want to support the mother, even if there are no risk factors to establish the feeding well. And uh, if symptoms happen, especially if seizures happen, the prognosis is uh, affected already because if you have symptomatic hypoglycemia with seizures, you have a 50% risk of neurodevelopmental problems. So we don't want to reach that stage. Transient hypoglycemia where the low glucose levels last only for a short time, you can define that as two to three days. Mostly it doesn't exceed seven days. Persistent and recurrent hypoglycemia imply a form that requires prolonged management. Usually more than three days, we start worrying about persistent and uh, beyond seven days is very unusual. As we discussed and Dr. Afaf mentioned, there is uncertainty regarding the concentration of glucose that is responsible. So why do you want to define hypoglycemia? You want to define it so we know what is a safe level that can be accepted. And uh, it's controversial because there is a spontaneous decrease followed by recovery of the blood glucose concentration and many well units may have asymptomatic hypoglycemia. So the reason not to disturb the normal I mentioned to you in the beginning as to why nature has a reason for doing everything and if you interrupt it, it may have long-term consequences which we may not be aware of even now. Of course, we know that neuroglycopenia can cause seizures and permanent brain damage. So this is the uh, catch-22 situation where you want to keep it as close to normal but at the same time you cannot take a risk because the uh, damage that you suffer is significant and you may have permanent damage. So we have different ways and there are uh, people who have looked at all uh, aspects. So we have the statistical approach with standard deviations according to the gestation, the age of life and everything. The initial chart that I showed you starting from 27 onwards for a breastfed baby in the first 24 hours, it's part of that description that you have the standard deviation. We have the Arakansas data where uh, they used to do blood sugar uh, routinely on the first day, but unfortunately that was not on a time basis, it was on a random basis. So that was uh, uh, more than uh, 20 years ago that all babies there used to get a blood sugar in the 24 hours, first 24 hours. So that data is available and then we have different uh, data based on uh, studies. So the statistical approach, the problem is individual kind of situations are not considered. Sometimes the timing of the test with the feed is not defined and the neurological status may not correlate. The physiologic approach is where you look at counter-regulatory responses. Uh, so this is a metabolic approach. The disadvantage of this is obviously uh, you have to do the glucose as well as you have to measure these counter-regulatory hormones, which is not feasible. These are expensive tests. You need bigger samples and you can do it in the lab possibly. But again, that doesn't mean that the counter-regulatory mechanism is preventing brain injury. The one that is uh, formed the basis for the results are the neurodevelopmental outcomes and neurophysiological changes. So there are studies by Alan Lucas, which have looked at the neurophysiological changes as well as neurodevelopmental outcomes. The cohort was uh, 36 weeks and below 1.8 kilo baby cohorts where the uh, sugar was assessed in the first 24 hours and then they followed these babies up. So they showed that uh, that is where the magic number of 47 comes in that uh, babies who are having that consistently below that they had a poorer neurodevelopmental score at 18 months. Uh, however, the, this uh, lower score was not sustained when they did the developmental assessment at later ages. However, uh, the neurophysiological changes also coincide in different studies around this mark. And we will be discussing when we uh, discuss the hypoglycemic brain injury, how these correlate.